this video i will discuss the pelvic girdle in detail its location its clinical correlates its anatomy but i will not discuss the bony landmarks of it i will discuss those in the upcoming two videos now before going into detail of the pelvic girdle we should know the terminology related to it what is pelvis what is pelvic girdle and what is the pelvic bone and its different names so first we will begin with the pelvis pelvis is the area between the abdomen and the thigh and this is structurally different in male and female and we all know that obviously because the male has penis in the pelvic region and the female has the vagina so this whole area below the abdomen and above the thigh is the pelvis or also called as the pelvic region now what is the pelvic girdle the pelvic girdle is the axial skeleton in the pelvis the skeleton you see in the picture right now is the pelvic girdle and there are different names of the pelvic girdle the pelvic girdle is also called as the pelvic skeleton and the bony pelvis and the final thing is the pelvic bone now these two bones alone are called as the pelvic bone this one is the right pelvic bone and this is the left pelvic bone the pelvic bone is also called as the hip bone now let me isolate one hip bone for you now this is the right hip bone or also called as the pelvic bone now before going into detail of the pelvic girdle i will discuss a few things about the pelvis now as i told you that pelvis is the area between the abdomen and the thigh and it has four major component in it one is the bony pelvis that you see in the picture also called as the pelvic girdle the second one is the pelvic cavity and this pelvic cavity is actually the extension of the abdominal cavity the gap enclosed by the bony pelvis is called as the pelvic cavity and it mainly consists of the reproductive organs and the rectum so the pelvic cavity mainly consists of the reproductive organ and the rectum the pelvic cavity is the whole space enclosed by the pelvic skeleton as you can see here this green and this yellow both is the pelvic cavity and we subdivide this pelvic cavity into two one is the greater or false pelvis and this is above the pelvic brim as you see here that the pelvic cavity above this pelvic brim is the false pelvis or the greater pelvis and the second one is the true pelvis and this is also called as the lesser pelvis and this is the pelvic cavity below the pelvic brim so this pelvic brim you see here subdivide the pelvic cavity into two one is the true pelvis and the other one is the false pelvis now this is something about the pelvic cavity the third thing in it is the pelvic floor and the pelvic floor you see is the doom shaped muscular sheet separating the pelvic cavity above from the perineal region below now think of the pelvic floor as a separating barrier above the pelvic floor we have the pelvic cavity and below the pelvic floor we have the perineal region and in the perineal region we have the sex organ located and the last thing in the pelvis is the peritoneum peritoneum is a continuous membrane which lines the abdominal cavity and cover the abdominal organs this membrane you can see is the peritoneum membrane now this membrane when it covers the abdominal cavity here then it is called the parietal peritoneum and when the same peritoneum covers the abdominal organs as you can see here then it is called visceral peritoneum so these four are the major component of the pelvis the bony pelvis the pelvic cavity the pelvic floor 
एंड द पेरिटोनियम नाउ केम टू द पेल्विक स्केलेटन और द पेल्विक गर्डल द पेल्विक स्केलेटन इज फॉर्म बाय द सेक्रम कॉक्सिक बोन एंड द टू हिप बोन्स द सेक्रम एंड द कॉक्सिक बोन फॉर्म द पोस्टीरियर साइड ऑफ द पेल्विक गर्डल वाइल द टू हिप बोन्स फॉर्म द इंटीरियर एंड द लेफ्ट एंड राइट साइड ऑफ द पेल्विक गर्डल नाउ द टू हिप बोन यू सी हेयर these two hip bones connect the lower limb with the spine now in this picture you see that at one side the hip bone is attached to the femur of the lower limbs while on the other side it is attached to the sacrum bone of the spinal cord so the hip bones act as a connection between the lower limb and the vertebral column both the hip bones are attached to the sacrum bone posteriorly and they are connected to each other anteriorly at the pubic symphysis and joined with the two femur bone at the hip joint so one hip bone has three connections one is with the sacrum bone second is with the femur bone and third one is with the another hip bone at the pubic symphysis bony pelvis is the part of the skeleton embedded in the pelvic region of the trunk and just like the pelvic cavity it is subdivided into two one is the pelvic girdle and the other one is the pelvic spine now the pelvic girdle is composed of the hip bones while the pelvic spine is composed of the sacrum and the coccyx bone now one important thing you should know about the bony pelvis is that it has a gap in the middle you can see here and this gap is significantly larger in females than the males in the process of giving birth to the baby the baby passes through this gap so it is obvious and makes sense that it has to be larger in females Now in the end we will discuss the clinical significance of the pelvis there are hip bone fractures that occur mostly in the females and to be more specific in the elderly female and it is due to osteoporosis and there are different kinds of the pelvic fracture so if there is a an elderly female and she has a hip bone fracture then you should obviously think of the osteoporosis in the first place now the hip bone fracture can also be occur from other causes such as traffic accident but if there is no history of the traffic accident and the patient is a elderly female then you should obviously think of the osteoporosis in the first place the second one is the pelvic pain and the pelvic pain can generally affect anybody and it has a variety of causes for example it can occur in the endometriosis in women it can occur due to bowel adhesion it can occur due to irritation bowel syndrome and also intestinal cystitis so in this condition you will see a pelvic pain now the last but not the least we have anatomical variation of the pelvis in some female the pelvis can be much larger than the normal size and it is called as a joint pelvis or the pelvis gesto major and in other cases it can be much smaller in size and then it will be called as the reduced pelvis or pelvis gesto minor now this is quite simple if the pelvis is larger in size then it is called as the joint pelvis and if it is small in size then it is called as a reduced pelvis now the one most important and interesting scenario is the android pelvis in this case the shape of the female pelvis is the same as that of the male pelvis mean that the female pelvis is not wide as it should be and these females have problem in giving birth to the child